Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on advanced Fortran programming. Now in this tutorial, we will be looking at a very simple concept but but uh, this will be this concept will be very very useful for you guys in the future. I mean, we will be looking at some timing functions in Fortran from which you can see whether your code is running good or not. Okay? Now, what I have here is, is a simple program to do a ma uh, simple mat uh, matrix multiplication. Okay? I will walk you guys through. What I have here is, I don't want this P, I don't need this P here, but anyway, uh, what, I ha what you have here is I have a parameter N whose value is 1000, I have three uh, iterative variables I, J, K, I, J, K, and uh, three ma matrices, N by N, N by N matrices, namely A, B, and C, okay? And what I have here is that I have three, vari three variables, T1, T2, and EP. Now, uh, using the inbuilt uh, the in inbuilt uh, allocation mechanisms, I set A1 to A the matrix A to be one and B to be zero. But only but uh, if but in the every i comma i index using this do loop, I set the value to be one. So what you guys know, what you guys will get is that this B matrix will be nothing but your identity matrix. Thereby, if you multiply A and B, you will get A back itself. And I set C to be zero. And now the timing operation will come here. See, there is this system. Uh, uh, in intrinsic function, intrinsic subroutine in Fortran called as CPU underscore time. Now what it will what it will do is at it will calculate the current second current time. It will measure the current time uh, when when this function is called and allocates that value in seconds to the value t1 to the variable t1. Okay. And what I have here is a nested nested do loop nested loop for doing a matrix multiplication. A nested loop for doing a nested uh, uh, nested loop for doing a matrix multiplication, and it doesn't matter if I were to you know this is i j and this should be k. But any anyway, it's a nested do loop for doing matrix multiplication. It's over here. I set this do things matrix multiplication by loops. Whereas what I do here, I call a, I call the same CPU underscore time function, and set the value t two over here. So what will this will do is that at this point when the compiler comes to this point. It will measure the si system time, okay, and then when it, when it comes to this point, it will measure the system time. These two times will be different. And now what EP does is that it will store the difference between the times. Obviously, T2 will be greater than T1, so T2 minus T1 will be the will be the time in seconds taken for the program to run this part of the code, okay. Now that being said, now that being said, EP will s store over here. And if the, your matrix C is small, you can use this statement over, and you can uncomment this statement to print it, and print the matrix to see how the result turns out to be. And then I say write this print statement over here saying that the time for multiplication of the loop in seconds is EP. Okay. Next, what I do is that I just repeat the same process on the top. Okay. And this time, to give a comparison, what I'm doing is that I'm doing the same matrix multiplication with matrix multiplication. Okay. Uh, with the matmul function with the matmul function nothing more nothing less now if i were to do that if i were to do that uh, i'm doing the same using the same variables on top and bottom to get the uh, same subroutines uh, cpu underscore time on the top and the bottom to get the same uh, to do the same operation similar to that okay and i get the difference in times similarly difference in times now uh, in this line i'm printing the values okay now what i did is that now uh, if you were to compile this Compile, build, and execute this. We will get the difference in times, okay? And that will be printed in the printed in the terminal, okay? And now what I did is that I also written a small shell script called as timing dot sh. It's pretty straightforward. List all, clears the screen, list all the contents, removes all the object executable and mod files, compiles the uh, uh, Fortran file, builds the Fortran file to get an executable, and then runs the executable here. But before that, I have this. Uh, new line, new thing called as time. Now, what it will do is that it will. Uh, this is a shell command that tells that uh, lists out how much time it took for that executable thing to work out. So these are these are like uh, an overall thing you can keep in mind. But it's not much important, but it's kind of necessary. Now to run this, what I do, what I do, okay, uh, I have the terminal ready here. Now let me clear this up. Okay. Now if I were to run this file bash dot search okay i already changed the file permission to it if i run this it does some operations now it's executing 
wait for some seconds there you have it it now it prints a value it says that the time taken for the multiplication in the loop is uh, is something like 4.388 seconds whereas the mul matrix multiplication in for the uh, in during the using the commands is less than is less than 0.4 seconds approximately 0.332 seconds and whereas this one this the, these three statements these come because of the time okay now this real time is actually the time taken for uh, is actually the time taken for the uh, sy system pr processor to work and all user time it i think it uh, user time it takes so other processors also into consideration there are slight slight differences in it and system time takes care takes uh, how much time it took for uh, swapping memory doing all the all the some some similar some simple process regarding file input output and all okay there if you guys check on the internet this will be where you can get the answer but this is not that e not r so important okay uh, th this will just give a time suppose if you were to ask uh, uh, input the f input the values of each and every entry in the matrix then the user time will increase and the real time will only take the computation time and all and stuff now if you guys notice you guys notice the reason why i told is that in this function in this program over here uh, in okay, uh, in this program over here in this program over here uh, we do the same matrix multiplication using do loop whereas we do the same matrix multiplication using the intrinsic function if you guys notice this loop is sl slower so i mean several times slower when compared to the function and if you were to give a even bigger value say say 10000 10, sorry 10000 will be too much it will take too much time i just keep it 2000 even this is too much if you run this this will take even longer time watch okay you have to wait so it's something it will take about 15 seconds or 20 seconds or something of that sort Hmm. Because the matrix is big, so it'll do that. It'll do that job. It'll take some time, and okay. I think 2,000 is still too much. I should have incremented it slowly. This will take like eight times the time. So even then, it should work some sometime around now. I think I, I think a few more seconds, and this. Multiplication will be done. Okay, now you are testing my patience. Yeah, wow. How about that? This entire matrix multiplication take took like sixty two seconds approximately. But surprisingly, the internal function the internal uh, matrix multiplication function took only 3.248 seconds to 3.25 seconds and if you guys know and if you guys notice you get the real time sec real time seconds the user time seconds accordingly also now this kind of thing can be very useful if you are especially you know uh, optimizing your code and all if you want to check which part of your code is taking the most number of most ex most time and you want to you know do some optimizations on that and that and if you want to see which part is taking less time and all uh, this kind of a method will be useful and it's not very important but if it this this can be very very benefit but it's not very important but this can be very very beneficial for those people who wanted to you know run make your code much faster so that it consumes less time and uh, want to optimize a lot okay and now why could the why this reason it's maybe because of the indices and all suppose if i were to change this indice to i just flip the indice okay i save it now this time instead of thou instead of the 2000 i just save it 1000 because i don't want you guys to wait for a long time so i say run this i think this will also take some time but okay even when even when changed it's like uh, it's like little slow it's like it's it's, it's 3 seconds and 0.34 over here let me just change this to i so assume this to be some kind of an algorithm and that's it and now run this again remember 3.37 and 0 0.34 and now if you run this it, this will take some more time because of this will take some more time yeah and you get this to be 4.4 reason reason is because Reasons because Fortran is column contiguous, and when we're doing this, we're actually jumping from rows, jumping from different rows, to different rows. We're like striding from rows across rows, so it will take some. It's taking much time over here. But when you take, when you do some column contiguous options, it will be little faster. Okay, 
that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial uh, this is very simple but this will be this is a very effective topic for you guys thank you guys for watching uh, and i'll see you guys next tutorial with uh, another different another different application bye